This conference will now be recorded. Okay. I don't know if you, you, you want to have the police department give them a ticket or. I'm sorry. I said Lynn is going to shoot me. So, no, Lynn, at the beginning of the meeting, I did not hit the record button. I just hit it now. That's why you heard that record break. Honest to God. Sorry. Um, Wait, okay. you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Excuse me, Tim. Tim, you yep. finally proved to me that you are human, <laughs> and I appreciate that mistake. I really do, because up until now, I had my doubts. But uh, <laughs> the error is human, so no problem. Uh, Thank you. I could. Sound like the secretary for Nixon. <laughs> so, Joe, would you start the meeting over, please? <laughs> okay. Let me uh, get my speech. Okay. All right. Uh, Jim, did you have anything else to say, Mr. Wolf? I don't mean no, that. I'm good. You're good? Okay. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. I just wanted to say that. Jim, Jim, I saw all the uh, work that you did, the study that you did. That was great. Um, my property is right where the psychic reader is. You're welcome to go in that backyard anytime. It's right directly across the street from the platform for the train station. So feel free. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, Jim, uh, Tim, I'm sure you're going to go into uh, – the brothers lot in your your, your uh, program, right? Okay, because that's why I didn't go into wooden capling and the changes there. Right. So um, tomorrow okay. night um, on the town council agenda, uh, they're going to be discussing the um, steep grant uh, and the town's um, contribution to the um, upgrades to be made to the brothers parking lot. There has been so a couple of things. The town is kicking in $165,000. We received a steep grant that uh, 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 was, was applied for by our grants administrator in this office, and we received it. So those two pools of money collectively get us the Brothers parking lot completely redesigned, nice lighting, nice, nicely lined, and, and uh, you know, a beautiful parking lot. Now, there is a, a group of people who have – now become uh, began to gain some momentum saying that they don't want it to be a parking lot they think it's a terrible um underutilization of that space uh primary of our town center uh and so uh we we have a little work to do at the town council meeting tomorrow night to uh, convince the councilors that uh that should in fact be a parking lot everybody received the uh, desk of joe column and with their materials is that correct then did we send that? No. Oh, okay. Um, so this we every every time the Wallingford magazine is published, we've been doing a from the desk of Joe column, as you're familiar with. This month, that column is about why the Economic Development Commission feels that the Brothers Lot is it should be a parking lot. It has to do with five separate initiatives that we've tackled over time to try to stimulate activity in the lower part of the hill. All right, we've said we've loved, we'd love to be able to mirror what's going on in the top of the hill. We'd love to mirror that activity at the bottom of the hill, but it's just not happening. So we've put in, even frankly, prior to my arrival here, put they put in an incentive housing zone to try to stimulate mixed-use development in the lower part of the hill. Since then, we've put in a tax incentive in that incentive housing zone, which is significant. It's a five-year tax incentive that says for the first two years, you pay zero in taxes. For the next two years, you pay only 25% of the taxes on that new and improved property. In the fifth year, you pay 50% uh, and you're not paying full taxes for the until year six. Very significant tax incentive. We've changed the zoning regulations to improve densities because we've done studies that have proven out that um, the sites as they are if we did not increase the density on those sites, what our, our zoning regulations at that time allowed, uh, once you do all the mathematics and we have, this is this was through a consulting firm out of Hartford that the, the Department of Transportation paid for, by the way, did not cost Wallingford a penny. 
uh, we proved collectively that none of those sites will ever be developed given what, you know, to our vision because the mathematics just don't work. You can't generate enough rental revenue on the sites to justify the investment in purchasing the sites, preparing the sites and building the facilities. The only way that we got it to work was to increase the density. So you may recall when the town zoning regulations were being rewritten that they, uh, they talked about um, or they did approve increasing going from three stories to four stories. So now a fourth floor is allowed. That's all about we need more revenue on the site, so we need more rentable space. They also reduced the parking requirement. All right, so parking lots don't generate revenue. They, they create expense. So we made less parking, went from one and a half um, automobiles or parking spaces per apartment down to one parking space per apartment. And doing that, it, that less parking lot means more apartments, more, rent, more rental revenue. So by doing that, that all worked. But in reality, you say, but if there are two cars in a household, where's the second car going to park? All right, that's why we need the brother's lot. We need the spillover parking. And so, and then the, the remaining piece of that happens to be the old railroad station. And we feel, and we've discussed it at our meetings, that we feel collectively that that is a significant asset that the town owns. Uh, but we also have agreed that uh, it is significantly underutilized. And we've had a number of discussions on visions as to what it could be. So I think the core of what it could be should be steeped in tr driving foot traffic in some sort of economic activity in the lower part of the hill. So if you envision even that one thing, even if the, if the railroad station was repurposed, and we've got some momentum in that direction, and we had some significant economic activity, wine bar, I know Rob is, is talking about art, an arts component to the railroad station. Anything that happens there is gonna generate traffic, generate people, that's what we want. We want more people. Where are the people gonna park? The railroad station does not have one single parking spot. So we needed the brothers parking lot in order to take and, and set the tone and, and set the example by saying, we are, we are fertilizing the ground. We're planting the seed corn here by having the parking in place so that it, it could stimulate more and make more of these, some of these other projects more likely. So that's our justification for wanting that parking lot. And of course the mayor agreed, the council agreed. That's why they allocated the $165,000 to do it. And then, of course, they purchased it, and they knocked they knocked the brother's restaurant down. The, this 165 I'm mentioning is is what's remaining to finish the lot. So we're we're into it for a lot more than with the 165, um, and that's why we applied for the grant. And the state, who is in, uh, <clears throat> very driven by transit-oriented development, the state was on board with saying we agree. You need parking around this transit-oriented development area to stimulate more activity. So all those pieces put together say, all right, we're, we're this close to getting this parking lot. And now again, there's a, there's a, a group that's come public saying that they wanna, you know, they wanna argue against it. So they will be presenting, I'm sure, at the council meeting tomorrow night, or I suspect anyway. Um, I have received several calls from the town councilors. They're the ones we sent the, from, desk, the, from the desk of Joe column to, my apologies. So every counselor with their council packet got a copy of that column, and I will make myself a note and send you that column tomorrow. My apologies, I should have sent it to you. Um, uh, so they, they, have, they have seen our justifications in writing, but we'll be there tomorrow morning or tomorrow night at the council meeting to take and, and again, verbalize our support. So Joe, did you want to ask any, any add any more to that or? Yeah, Tim, I just did want to reinforce that. I think. The situation basically is that this other group of people that's looking to make a park there really doesn't understand the scope of, of what's going on. And I really believe if they did, if everybody would just take a deep breath and take a, take a, take a look at what we're talking about. I mean, we're talking about the future of, of uh, Wallingford in that area. I mean, we've got a, uh, a railroad station there now. Uh, we, we have plans. We've got the zoning to, to develop that area, uh, enhance the, uh, the income and the population for that area, 
create more walking traffic for the downtown area. And as far as a park goes, I'm a big believer in parks, but like anything else, you could over park yourself. And if you look at that area within blocks, you have three or four nice facilities, nice parks. I mean, Community Lake itself is not four blocks away. Uh, on the other side, you, you have another park. So it isn't like the town is 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 without parks in that area. Uh, really, if you take a look at it, I don't think the demographics support another park. So just to, to, to throw the word park out there, like it's some type of situation that we need, and it doesn't really help the community. It doesn't enhance the quality of life down there. The quality of life will be income and foot traffic. The parks are already there, and and they'll be utilized even more with the additional uh, foot traffic. So I just wanted to make that point clear so people really understand where we're coming from. I know I'm basically singing to the choir, but it's just uh, little nuggets that we may need tomorrow when we make our presentations because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people uh, talking against it. And unfortunately, like many of the programs in town that we take up, they're coming with lack of real scope to what they're talking about. They're just focused on the park and they don't look at the big picture. And it's and it really does harm, in my mind, to the economic growth of, of Wallingford and for our future. And, uh, you know, my belief is that EDC has always had one foot in the past, trying to hold on to Warrenford's history while planning for its future and bringing the two together in a cohesive manner. And I'll end it there. Joe, can I say something? I, I think you should really play on that park issue because obviously that's their point. That's their trump card. Um, I think when whoever's gonna speak, uh, however we're gonna speak, I think you have to say, a tenth of a mile, there's Wallace Park. Half a mile is Community Lake. The dog park is three quarters of a mile. It's something that's very specific about just saying, well, we got plenty of parks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because it, there are a lot of parks in the area. Let's make sure we cover all of them within a, within a reasonable walking distance for people uh, and say, well, why are you going to add another park? You know, it, does, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I, I think we just should just watch that, you know? I agree, Mark. Thank you. Jim? Good point. And I will, I will add that, uh, you know, to that point, Mark, that the uh, the people who um, are opposed to making it a parking lot, um, um, in essence, are people who don't believe anything will ever be developed down there. So they're saying, you know, nothing's ever going to happen anyway, so why are you making it a parking lot? Mm -hmm. They want to make it a park, you know, the splash with splash pads and, you know, water amenities and things of that nature. Um, you know, I think in economic development, uh, you've heard me use the phrase, you know, start everything with possibility thinking. Uh, and, and that's that's what we are. We, we have to paint pictures. We have to pursue visions uh, that are in line with, with what, the, what the town wants and what everybody feels is for the betterment of the community. And a more active and vibrant lower downtown or lower town center is just that. That, that is something that, you know, we, we want to endeavor to do. Um, because our town center is, is unique and it's a, such a fantastic asset. So I, I, for one, am not not persuaded by people who say, oh, oh, so you put a parking lot there and all of a sudden development's going to start? Well, you know something? It may not. But I'll tell you right now, if we don't put a parking lot there to accommodate development, it'll certainly never happen. So I'd certainly much rather have it there Hey, listen, in 10 years, 15 years, for some reason, something changes and they want to make it a park, go to it. But if you make it a park today and a development opportunity comes around, I don't see I don't see it ever becoming a parking lot going from a, you know, a park to a parking lot versus the other way around. So I, I, I like I like, that, I like our chances. Of it. You know. Uh, Tim and Joe, I'd like to add to that too. The, the space in front of the old uh, railroad station is used on a regular basis 
by the town. They have, you know, town functions there. It's used like a park. They, they've had the uh, farmer's market out there. And there's plenty of space. It, it should be considered as a park atmosphere in front of the, you know, uh, from the uh, gazebo up to the station. And I've walked through there many times. I wish I could now, but <laughs> anyway, um, it's uh, it's a great location and, and it's adequate. Excuse me, Patricia, did you have something you wanted to say? I guess not. Okay, I'm sorry, Jim. Okay, Tim. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, guys. Guys, I had to switch to the phone because I, I saw your mouth moving, but I couldn't hear you. So okay. I had to switch to the phone. So I'm on the phone now. No problem. Okay, thank you. So Jim, to your point, that is actually Johanna uh, Fishbein Park, right in front of the railroad station, right? So, um, okay, uh, just moving on, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, we good? Okay, um, um, I know Kathy Lilly is on the, on the call, but uh, she's in her downtown report, she had mentioned that um, there is a holiday store open at the Hubcap. It's open Friday, Saturday, and Sundays from now till Christmas. Um, we were there, a couple of us were there the other day on business and, uh, you know, they've got 10 craft vendors set up inside selling all kinds of holiday related crafts along with, you know, Wallingford, um, the town of Wallingford logoed materials, hats, t-shirts, that type of thing. So if you have an opportunity, uh, I'd encourage you to stop in. Um, uh, DECD, I reported at the last meeting, uh, came out with a $50 million grant program for small businesses which would enable any small business that qualified and the, the qualifications were not onerous at all. It's basically the state's way of saying, we know small businesses are hanging on by a thread in many cases and with minimal qualifications, we'll give you $5,000. It's not a loan, it's a grant. Take the money, hopefully it'll keep you afloat through the winter. So that was a, that was a pool of $50 million. Um, within one week, that pool was oversubscribed by almost double. They received $90 million in applications. Um, so I share that with you. Obviously, they closed it down after they got to the point where they knew they couldn't satisfy, uh, you know, most all of the, or, or any more than $50 million with the request. Um, it just, I think, uh, is an illustration that the the, uh, the need out there um, is, is pretty significant when it comes to small businesses. So uh, uh, just wanted to give you that for an FYI. Um, also, um, I just wanted to share that we are in the process now um, of posting Lynn's position. We've gone through all of the uh, necessary stuff to do that. The uh, Lynn's position, because the job description has changed um, somewhat over the last 30 years, I say tongue in cheek, Lynn, it has changed drastically over the last 30 years. And I say that very positively, because if you don't have a Lynn, you don't have the ability to change it in such a positive direction. Um, but Lynn has proven how, how flexible and adaptable she is to so many tasks. Uh, so that position has to be approved by the town council because of the fact that it's changed so, so drastically. So that is on their agenda tomorrow night as well. Once it gets approved, we will have that job posted and hopefully uh, be looking and uh, interviewing applicants before the year's out. Uh, I will say publicly, Lynn, I hope you're okay with this, that uh, Lynn's initial retirement date was January 6th. She has graciously agreed to stick around a little bit longer, recognizing that uh, the timeline between accepting applications, interviewing, and the potential of someone having to give a notice at their, at their present job, um, and the fact that we'd like to take an overlap, a new person with uh, Lynn for a week or two, uh, would never happen by January the 6th. So uh, Lynn, I publicly thank you for you being flexible once again. Um, and then let's see. In, in my um, in the news column in my report, I, I, I left the story in there about the police and the community impact unit. And some of you may have said, and so why is that related to economic development? Um, I just it, it was a reminder for me to remind all of us that um, public safety, community safety, uh, is is paramount to businesses that are looking to come to a community like Wallingford. So. Um, I thank Chief Wright and all of his officers for all they do. This community impact unit, again, says very, very strongly that Wallingford is, is listening to the people and it wants a safe and effective environment. And that certainly helps economic development. And we, we certainly know that to be the case. 
Um, last two things, um, we know that the Amazon facility up on uh, Five Research Parkway is uh, still under um, consideration by the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission. Uh, so that is that will be on their agenda again in January. It was on in November. Um, Amazon or, or the um, uh, the contractor uh, whose name I just jumped out of my head, but anyway, the applicant on behalf of Amazon, uh, they pulled out of the December in the Wetlands Commission meeting, and they'll, so they'll be addressing the commission again in, uh, in January. Um, and then lastly, um, the Planning and Zoning Commission did uh, change the regulations to allow wellness centers in the town center zone, which has cleared a path for um, Dr. Tracy Moulton to move her Healing Hands Chiropractic up to the old Bank of America building, uh, not just as a chiropractic office, but it needs to be a wellness center. And I, will, I, I wanted to publicly give credit to the Planning and Zoning Commission for their open-mindedness, their flexibility, uh, to our Corporation Council, Janice Small, for working directly with the applicant on definitive language as to what a wellness center is, and by default, certainly what it is not, uh, to take and pave the way for that particular opportunity. So, um, you know, in spite of um, a lot of very difficult things that are happening in the business environment. Um, uh, I think we should be pretty pleased that we've got um, a lot of irons in the fire and a lot of balls in the air. So uh, we're we're still we're still plowing ahead pretty hard. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that is my report. Jim, uh, uh, Jim, I'll be right there. Tim, if you could, I think we should follow up on Mark's suggestion. If we can kind of get the mileage, the distance between the parks and the uh, brothers' lot, that would be helpful for tomorrow night, if it's possible. Consider it done, as long as I don't have to report it. <laughs> okay, Jim, you wanted to say yeah, something? Yeah, I just had a question. In your report, Tim, uh, you had mentioned uh, New York commercial realtors came down for a tour. Yes. Can you elaborate on that? I can. Um, it turns mm -hmm. out that that is, that is not gonna come to fruition. There were, there were, it's a group of New York developers that I cannot disclose. They had put a, um, a a bid in on a piece of property in our IX zone. Um, the use in the IX zone was something that um, um, is presently allowed, but has been disallowed under the proposed regulations that we'll be talking about on Thursday. Um, that dissuaded those, and, and frankly, I, I really don't think it's a bad thing. Uh, you know, not everybody that looks is is you know really the, the best candidate. It had to do, frankly, with, with um, um, open span storage. In other words, creating a big parking lot and doing outside storage as opposed to putting a building on a piece of property. Um, so they have, they have since um, taken an exercise or option to, uh, uh, to pull out of that particular deal, which again, um, given the circumstances, I don't think is a, is a terrible thing. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Lynn, do we need to know the name of the caller too? Someone's on the phone. Do you need that for your records? I think we would only need that if they spoke. Okay. Hank, you had a question? Uh, Tim, I just wanted to ask you, is there, do you think, anticipate any problems with um, the Amazon at um, my research? with uh, wetlands? Uh, I do actually. Um, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's 219,000 square foot building, but the parking area in relation, in proportion to the building, the parking area is immense. Um, the, the, because that site is in the watershed, uh, you know, the uh, wetlands and the Wallingford, you know, water uh, division, um, as they say, they would much rather see roofs than parking lots because they can best control the water that comes off a roof through, you know, downspouts, et cetera. Right. They can best direct off a parking lot. It's much more difficult to direct uh, during, you know, sheet type rains is, is their, their terminology. So, um, you know, do I think that eventually it, it could pass? I do. Um, do I think that they'll, They'll make them take, you know, uh, extra precautions. Um, I, I think they will as well. So, 
And that's what the first time that they presented that was the, the big hang up is that you've got so much paved surface that you're proposing here. Um, how are we going to control all of this runoff when it's going to run right into our, our drinking water supply? Hmm. Um, the new regulations you'll see are, are basically saying, uh, to your point earlier, Jim, we don't want to see as much, you know, manicured grass. We want to see we want to see things left naturally. Manicured grass to them equates with, and rightfully so, equates with pesticides and lawn treatment. Um, natural land, you know, is is just that, uh, and it absorbs uh, water at a much you know better and uh, and faster pace in most cases. So. Um, I think that the Amazon project has got its challenges because of the fact that there's so much impervious surface, i.e. the parking lot. Um, so, but we'll see. It seems like a terrible underutilization of that property uh, with that square footage. Um, I wouldn't disagree with that. Um, you know, uh, as in comparison, Bristol Myers had a million square feet. No. It, it was not a million square feet of a you know of a flat building building it was you know storied, uh, but they were approved for three million square feet you know four, 30 years ago when they you know when they built that facility, they just never finished building it out, so the three million square feet would have been the equivalent of a, a you know a million square foot of you know ground surface, um, whether that would be allowed at that scope today I really doubt, I think regulations have changed and tightened a lot since then. Yeah. Uh, but certainly um, 219,000 square feet on that site. Um, again, I'm trying not to, you know, levy a strong opinion, but it's it's like, you know, putting a penny on a football field. It, it just, it, 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 there seems to me that, you know, um, there could be more to it. And that's not to say that there could, there may not, there may be more to it. I mean, mm -hmm. they may turn around at some point and come back and say, okay, now that we've done this, we want to do more and more. Uh, what makes that a little less likely is the way that the building uh, that they're proposing is, is situated on the site. Um, it would you know, be a little more challenging to take and, and add to it unless they were adding it onto the surface that had already been designated. But I think we hold out some hope that um, you know at some point it'll be a lot more than a 219,000 square foot warehouse. And it could be that they were just gun shy because the last time they had a bigger project proposed and that didn't go so well. Uh, Tim, before we wrap it up, can you just summarize the meetings, the two meetings that are coming up, uh, the town council and planning and zoning uh, that we need to be at for the Wooding property and the uh, Brothers property and the, uh, I guess those are the, the big issues that we're looking at, am I right? Joe, when you talk about the wooding property, are you talking about uh, the, the Simpson Court? Okay, so <laughs> yeah, that's that's not on the uh, council agenda tomorrow night. I, I think it'll be in, in January. Okay. Is, okay. Is that what you were told today? Yeah. Yeah. Will we have a meeting prior to that? Yes, we will. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll be well. I think. It's probably best if the council talked. Well, I'm not sure what I should say at this point, but um, you know, there's there's efforts um, to take and um, and improve the parking lot um, on Wallace Avenue, the one that um, uh, the mayor was gracious enough to approve some monies to a couple of years ago. To it was all you know, if you've been back there, it's behind the old you know, behind the police station, but almost directly across from uh, you know Center Street Brewing Company. That used to be just all grass and weeds and things like that, and we've we've uh, now now put um, I forget the surface they call it, but uh, it's you know the when they grind up the road, they got all those little tarp shale like yeah. yeah, so they laid that out, uh, but now they're talking about you know formally um, paving that, putting up you know lights so it's a and and you know uh, lining it so it's an official parking lot. Um, and also at the same time that is they're looking at this uh, you know, going together is, is uh, improvements to the parking lot behind Simpson Court between uh, you know the Simpson Court buildings and Holy Trinity School that lot that has been in disrepair uh, for quite some time and does not enhance the experience of coming to downtown Wallingford at all. So you know, we we have been in support 
uh, but it's up to you as a commission. But I know that in the past we've talked about it. It's been a while. But we have supported the improvement on both of those parking lots so that we can continue to, uh, um, you know, improve the experience of, of uh, coming to our town center. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have anything else for other than? And before we close the meeting, I just want to apologize again. Uh, I I started the meeting uh, with a few off uh, off script, and that probably delayed the recording of this meeting. And I just wanted in the, the recording that we do have minutes of the beginning of the meeting, and they will be posted. And again, I apologize for the lateness of uh, recording this meeting. And I thank you all for your attendance. And if uh, we can have a motion on uh, whether or not you want to close this meeting. I move that we close the meeting. I second well, it. Patricia seconds it. All in favor? Aye. I guess it's unanimous. Again, thank you. Enjoy your holidays. And again, thank you again for the card. We'll talk to you soon. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Bye.